welcome to today's lecture today we will be studying about the pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle is a fan shaped muscle which fills most of the upper part of the thorax in this slide what you can see this entire thing is the thorax what you can see over here this is the pectoralis major muscle so this pectoralis major muscle it is a large fan shaped muscle that covers most of the upper part of the thorax what you can see over here so this is the mammary gland so this mammary gland is lying superficial to the pectoralis major muscle so the pectoralis major muscle is forming the bed for the mammary gland also the pectoralis major muscle it forms the anterior wall of the axilla so here you are having the axilla so this pectoralis major muscle will form the anterior wall of the axilla now coming to the origin of this pectoralis major muscle so before that you are supposed to see the bones what is present here so this bone this is the clavicle this is the sternum so this is the manubrium part of sternum this is the body this is the siphoid process whereas this bone over here is the humerus so now coming to this origin of this pectoralis major muscle so it arises by two heads so one is called the clavicular head so what you are seeing here this is the clavicular head another head what you are seeing here this entire thing that is called the sternocostal head so this is the clavicular head whereas this entire portion is called the sternocostal head now what you can see here so this is the clavicular head so this clavicular head of the pectoralis major muscle is small comparing to the sternocostal head this clavicular head arises from the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle so you can just divide this clavicle into medial as well as lateral halves so this pectoralis major muscle that is the clavicular head is arising from the anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle now in this picture what you can see so this is forming the sternocostal head so the sternocostal head from that you can see the fibers so these are called the manubrial fibers this is the sternocostal fibers and this is the aponeurotic fibers so if you see this manubrial fibers they arise from the lateral half of the anterior surface of the manubrium so this is the manubrium so this is the lateral half of the manubrium so here will be the medial portion so here it arises from the lateral half of the anterior surface of the manubrium so what you can see over here all these are the sternal fibers so this sternal fibers they arise from the lateral half of the anterior surface of the sternum up to the sixth costal cartilage so the costal fibers they arise from the second to sixth costal cartilages now coming to the aponeurotic fibers what you are seeing here they arise from the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle of the abdomen now coming to the direction of the fibers so what you can see over here these clavicular fibers they run downwards and laterally this is the medial aspect this is the lateral aspect so the clavicular fibers you can see here it is running downwards and laterally whereas the sternocostal fibers you can see they are running upwards and laterally so the direction of fibers is the clavicular fibers run downwards and laterally whereas the sternocostal fibers 
they run upwards and laterally now coming to the insertion so what you can see over here in the humerus so this is the region where the pectoralis major muscle gets inserted so it forms an u shaped bilaminar tendon that inserts in the lateral lip of bicipital groove so in this humerus so what you what this depression what you are seeing here this is the bicipital groove so here you are having the medial lip of bicipital groove and here you are having the lateral lip of bicipital groove so this pectoralis major muscle will be inserted into the lateral lip of bicipital groove so in this picture what you can see here so this is the bilaminar tendon which is getting inserted into the lateral lip of bicipital groove so this bilaminar tendon is around 5 cm broad and has two lamina so what you can see over here this is the anterior lamina whereas this is the posterior lamina so the anterior lamina is thicker and shorter compared to the posterior lamina the anterior lamina it consists of superficial fibers which is arising from the clavicle and also deep fibers which is arising from the manubrium so here the posterior lamina what you are seeing here so it is thinner and larger comparing to the anterior lamina so it is formed by the fibers from the front of the sternum second to sixth costal cartilage as well as the aponeurosis from the external oblique muscle of the abdomen another thing what you are supposed to know is the anterior lamina as well as posterior lamina are continuous with each other inferiorly that is at the base the anterior lamina and the posterior lamina are continuous with each other the lower sternocostal as well as the abdominal fibers in their course to the insertion are twisted in such a way that the fibers which are lowest at the origin are inserted in a higher level whereas the fibers which are in a higher level of origin are inserted in a lower level the twisting of this fibers form the rounded anterior axillary fold now coming to the nerve supply of the pectoralis major muscle the pectoralis major muscle is supplied by the medial pectoral nerve as well as the lateral pectoral nerve the medial pectoral nerve reaches the muscle by piercing the pectoralis minor muscle the lateral pectoral nerve reaches the muscle by piercing the clavi pectoral fascia now coming to the action of pectoralis major muscle the muscle as a whole produces adduction and medial rotation of the arm the clavicular fibers produces flexion of the arm the sternocostal fibers produces extension of the flexed arm against resistance now coming to clinical testing of the pectoralis major muscle now we tell the patient to place his hands over the hip and to press the hip so that the anterior axillary fold will become prominent during this method similarly the entire muscle can be tested by pressing the fist against each other now in this diagram what you can see so this is the clavicular fibers which are prominently seen here whereas this is the sternocostal fibers which are seen prominently here so here for the checking the clavicular fibers we have we can tell the person to lift an heavy rod so when a person is lifting an heavy rod the clavicular head becomes prominent it can also be 
uh, seen when we ask a patient to push an heavy table. So when, it, when a person is pushing an heavy table also, the clavicular fibers will become prominent. Whereas for making the sternocostal fibers to become prominent, when, when a person attempts to depress the rod, the sternocostal head will become prominent. It can be also done by asking the person to pull a heavy table. Coming to clinical importance, so what you can see that is the Poland anomaly or the Poland syndrome. This anomaly or syndrome is the congenital absence of the entire or a part of the pectoralis major muscle. So you can see in this diagram, so here you can see completely the pectoralis major muscle is absent whereas here a portion of it is absent. So here only the clavicular head is present whereas the sternocostal uh, head is absent in this picture. So due to this Poland syndrome it causes weakness in adduction and medial rotation of the arm. Thank you for watching.